This program was first broadcast on Canterbury's access media station, Plains FM, and was made with the assistance of New Zealand On Air. It's time for Emergence News on Plains FM 96.9, Citizen Made Radio. Kiora, welcome to Emergence News. On previous programs, we have highlighted several stories from the August 2023 issue of Share International magazine. Today, we focus on the new look Share International website, which features a story on signs of Maitreya's emergence. And I quote from the website, the July 1991 cover of Life magazine asks... Do you believe in miracles? And reported that thousands of unexplained, miraculous phenomena are occurring worldwide. The Life magazine's editor did a little digging, and it turned out that there has been a rash of sacred apparitions all over the world, indicating Recent, in recent times, a worldwide spiritual revival. And according to Life magazine, it's one of the great stories of our time. In April 1995, Time magazine devoted an eight-page spread to its cover story on miracles and concluded people are hungry for signs. Reports of signs and miracles involving people from all faiths and those of none are increasingly reaching the media. For many people, these phenomena provide evidence of the return of a teacher. So today we're going to turn our attention to the updated New Look Share International website. And I've got two Share International volunteers, radio producers and presenters, Award winning. Yeah. Here yeah. they are, yeah, Peter yeah. and John. <laughs> John, I know for a fact that over the years that you've been on this program, which is what, seven or eight years now, yeah. that the number one resource that you turn to is the Sheer International website, isn't it? Yes, it is. It's fabulous. And I, if anybody listening has any interest at all in this story, Probably the best and the quickest and the easiest source of information to access is the Share International website. Yes, and it's been updated. And it, Peter, I don't know whether you've looked at the website. You must have this week because we're talking about it. <laughs> but it's uh, really user friendly. I find it quite easy to navigate, quite yes. simple to navigate around the website. Mm. And as John just said, if you want more information on who Maitreya is and, this, and his story, his background story, um, it's really nicely laid out, isn't it? Yes, with a, with a look, for sure. Mm. It's not just, and this is what I find interesting, it's not just the Maitreya story, it is that esoteric body of knowledge. Mm. Mm. Um, so, yeah, it's it's not just for people that are devotees. It's for people that have an interest in another life and mm. another look at how humanity exists. And that's why I've gone to the to the topic that I've gone to. And what is your topic? Well, my topic, Nigel, I'm pleased you asked, is... <laughs> well, you sort, of, you, you sort of laid it out there for me. You opened the door, didn't you? Yes. Um, is the glossary of esoteric terms. Mm. Mm. Good idea. Yeah. You're our ideas man. And, which, and we're going to have a little bit of a, a fish around in the glossary of esoteric terms. Yeah, good idea. Yeah. Uh, you, you were hinting at the website offers the opportunity to to look at a different philosophy and the ancient wisdom teachings is a mm. good section that really mm. encapsulates what that means. Yeah. But I, I want to be clear, the website has come about because of the emergence of Maitreya. However, there is a vast body of knowledge there that pertains to all aspects of our lives. Um, so it's, and you know, I'm sure that if our listeners just dive into it, they'll find something interesting. And my aim today is to send them little snippets of words and terms. Snapshots. Snapshots. In fact, I've used that word very much in my intro um, 
to get them to get them hungry, to get them stimulated. Oh, okay. So what does that really mean? Uh, and the website's great for that. And Peter, what are you looking at today? Well, I've got a lot of um, questions and answers there from actually from the Share International magazine, but um, there's such a variety of um, subjects, isn't there? Mm. You know, like I mean, it, mm. it's from. Buddha, it's looking at our history, it's looking at our future. There are so many subjects in there. You know, if you go to the website, you'll find one that interests you immediately and yeah. um, you just need to get yeah. onto that one. Yeah. And the website is easy to locate online. And on the home page currently, there's a summary for new readers on the emergence of Maitreya, the world teacher, who's an educator, teacher and guide for all people and irrespective of your background or belief. He's here to show us how to solve our most critical global problems. And the website's available in English, Dutch, Spanish, French, and Japanese. This is Emergence News, and we're looking at the new the new look Share International website. And over to you, John. Okay, so as I say, I, I, the glossary of esoteric terms became really important for me a long, long time ago. <laughs> when I started getting into this story, and I found it incredibly useful. And I think, Peter, I originally came across on one of Benjamin Krem's books, and I think in some of his earlier books, uh, it has the glossary of esoteric terms mm. in the back, I think. Is yes. that right? Yeah, Th- that's That's where I came across it first, and now, of course, it's um, it's on the website, which is where I went to, to uh, today to have a look at it. Now, I printed you both off a copy of the glossary of esoteric terms so that you can look at the stuff that I'm going to talk about. Um, now, I think for me personally, to get to grips with some of the terms and ideas talked about in BC's, in Benjamin Cream's books, and in the esoteric writings in general, it really helped me to have some universal definitions. Uh, and I think it's obvious, if you're about to embark on a program of learning that is new to you, of course you'll need to pick up the language used by that body of knowledge and its practitioners. For instance, and I'm being my cynical slash humorous self here, one of the most overused, abused and misused words in the English language at the moment is the word spiritual. Everything's become spiritual, all right? Um, And in fact, if I was the word spiritual, I'd be complaining to the UN or something about the abuse I'm receiving. So I went straight to the Glossary of Esoteric Terms, and I've got it tagged for you guys, and it's at the back, right down at the bottom, the word spiritual. According to Benjamin Krem, via the Glossary of Esoteric Terms, spiritual is the quality of any activity which drives the human being forward towards some form of development, physical, emotional, intuitional, social, an advance of their present state. Another word is evolution, isn't it? It's evolution, but it could be a whole lot of things as long as it moves you forward. forward. Yeah. Mm. And I guess I'm re- reminded we've talked about that um, concept of sacrifice and the movement forward, I think, has to be from the lower to the higher, right? So I suspect only fans and doing it for the money is possibly not a qualification in that area, Mm -hmm. right? So there's an awful lot of things that are offered to people in our current culture, which they may consider spiritual but may not be, unless there's that element of um, moving from the lower to the higher. All right, so that same page, I'm looking and I've got solar logos. what, What is a solar logos? It is the divine being ensouling our solar system. So when I first discovered that, I went, what? What does that mean? What does that mean, mm. right? Now, so we talk about the God of this planet, but according to Benjamin Krem, every planet has a God or a Logos, and even the solar system has a Logos. So planet Earth is part of a chakra of the energetic body of a being so divine and so large as our solar system, right? So let's go and have a look at the word Hence, we need to be very responsible when we send people out into, into space. Because it's not our space and it's not empty and it's not dead. Mm-hmm. Right? Okay. So I go to the word logos, which is the other one I've got tagged for you guys. Are you keeping up with me? 
Peter, have a look there. I've printed this off for you, not even looking at it. I put little <laughs> sticky tags on it. I put marker pen on it. Come on, work with me here. Very user-friendly, John. <laughs> Okay, look at the word Logos. You didn't do one for Charlie. No, I didn't. Sorry, Charlie. Charlie's our producer. I'm the only person I know that can say that. It would have got a producer. It would have got him off the phone. <laughs> it would have got him young people and their phones, right? Okay, Logos, God, the cosmic being who ensouls a planet, planetary Logos, a solar system, solar Logos, okay, big intake of breath here, a galaxy, galactic Logos, and so on to infinity. So when I was very, very new to this information and I started getting exposed to those sort of ideas, it really shook me, mm. right? It really shook me. So I found the word Christ under sea, right? You've got it there for you, Nigel, under sea. It's the next yellow tag. I was looking for the yellow tag. <laughs> it's there. <laughs> Sometimes I just can't help you with this stuff. Okay, <laughs> the word Christ, a term used to designate the head of the spiritual hierarchy, the world teacher, the master of all the masters. This is the name of an office or function within the spiritual hierarchy, which is currently held by the Lord Maitreya. The future holder of this office for the next cosmic cy cycle, the age of Capricorn, is already known. I must we admit, when I first was exposed to this information, that's a word. Yeah. This was completely new to me, that the yep. word Christ isn't just associated with Jesus of Nazareth. Yes. Mm, yes. and um, It's an office. Yes, it's sake. a job. Yeah, yeah it's right? the head, headmaster. Yeah, it's a job. And um, I think it's unfortunate that certain belief systems around the world think they own the world, the word and the title. Okay, and I'm going to finish up back in the S category, which is where I started with you, just to make it easier. Is the yellow tag appropriate? Is the yellow tag is appropriate. Under S, now when we talk about Logos of the world, Logos, our God, if you like, it is an individual, a being called Sanat Kumara. And Benjamin Krem describes him as the Lord of the world, the etheric physical expression of our planetary Logos, who dwells on Shambhala. Now, Shambhala is the energetic centre for hierarchy on this planet, and I believe it hovers above the Gobi Desert, correct? Okay, so Sanat Kumara, Benjamin Krim tells us, is a great being, originally from Venus, who sacrificed himself to become the personality vehicle of the ensouling deity of our planet 18.5 million years ago. The nearest aspect of God that we can know. Right. Now, so in that little statement, in that little snippet of information, there's a whole story, right? What do you mean a great being originally from Venus? What do you mean? What do you mean? What are mm. you trying to... There's a whole story there, right, which are covered in LSA Bailey books and which Benjamin Krem expounds upon time and time again about planet Earth's relationship with the other planets in the solar system, the solar system's relationship with other cosmic bodies right throughout this universe, I guess. Mm -hmm. So even that one statement, Sanat Kumara, has got a whole story in there. Is Am I right, Peter, in saying that that's his, so that's like, our, is that his personal name? Yes, uh, yes, that's why this uh, Senate Kamara is. He is one of the well. There's several Kamaras there on the um, at the higher echelons there, and he's uh, Senate Kamara. He's the head of the. When we talk about the age of our planet Earth, and th and it's going through various cycles, and it's mm. not yet a sacred planet. Yeah. How do, how is Senate Kamara mm. related to that? Well, he's um, he's the personality of the Logos, if you like. He's the one that we know that we can relate to, um, but he's not the actual god of the planet, if you like. Mm. He's, he's the, the personality. He's the number one agent yes. of God, right? So, right. Oh, so it's like an office. Yeah. Well, yes, I guess it is. He, yeah. um, the Silent Watcher, is the name that we have for the being who is the God. 
yeah. if you like. But Sanat Kamara is actually the personality. Yeah. And I, one of the things that, that I try and understand is this, this ability or this process that reflects right through cosmos where there is a higher source a middle source, which we call a soul, or which is the reflection of the higher source, and it's reflected down and reflected down and reflected down through the levels of creation to communicate with that creation. So the logos of this planet and, and its energetic bath with, within that planet sits doesn't walk on this planet because he is the planet. Mm. So he is an agent a reflection, a soul, I guess. I don't know if that's the right term. But he is he has an agent, Sanat Kumara. So as you begin to comprehend this and understand this concept, mm. it's another reason to take a higher level of responsibility for how we treat our home. Mm. It's the body of God. Mm. Yeah, if you have any understanding of divinity in whatever language or culture or caste, or class, or religion, you are standing upon the body of your God, and therefore it behoves you to treat it as such. And you can see why some cultures have, um, you know, pray to the, the deity to before they cut down a tree, for example. Yes. Mm. yes. Yeah. Because they're doing it for a purpose, but they're respecting the being who's yeah. it is part of. And, and every tree on this planet has a working role, has a job, mm. right? So as soon as you chop one down, and we've been doing it for thousands of years, you are in some way diminishing aspects of the planet that you live on, which is a reflection of the divinity to which you, to which you pray to. Mm. And when you read some of the histories of um, the earlier peoples on this planet, they understood that intrinsically. Yes, that actually everything came from God and returned to God. Mm. Um, so, yeah, it's um, it's an interesting... Honestly, you get into this glossary of esoteric things. Super, isn't it? It just knocks you with some of the ideas. I want you to go back to the letter S, John, before you go. Oh, my goodness. It's, you mentioned... I've got a wee tag here, Nigel. Yeah, you... <laughs> how thoughtful. <laughs> <laughs> the, the, you mentioned the term Shambhala. Yes, and that that's where part of the hierarchy or some of the significant members of the hierarchy reside. Mm. Can you read the uh, the definition of the sh- of Shambhala there? For okay, us? so let's go back to Sanat Kumara, the Lord of the World. He the um, the physical etheric physical expression of our planetary logos who dwells on Shambhala. Let's. What is Shambhala? Shambhala, a center of energy, the major center in the planet. It is located above the Gobi Desert on the two highest etheric planes. From it and through it flows the Shambhala force, the energy of will or purpose. It corresponds to the crown chakra in the human form. Right. So all of a sudden we have a solar logos and the planets are its chakras. Every planet has a god and energy centers on this planet are the chakras of that God, right? And then we have the physical body. And oh my goodness, it has chakras, energy centers. And so when the Bible, I think it is, talks about we are made in the likeness of God, Mm. it is exactly true. And when we talk, when the Sanskrit teachings talk about as in the macrocosm, so in the microcosm, it is true. The way the solar system is constructed is the way we are constructed. The way this cosmos is constructed is the way our solar system is constructed is the way we are constructed. It is mind-boggling. And my mind is so boggled, (laughs) I'm starting to run off at the mouth. Go to someone else. Very interesting. Thank you, John. That glossary of esoteric terms, we must revisit that again Great on stuff. a future program. Mm. Mm. All right, Peter, over to you, sir. Thanks very much. And uh, I'll just carry on where John left off, actually, on, from the questions and answers section of the Share International. And uh, somebody asked, what are the crop circles? Every crop circle is a vortex, a point on your magnetic on our magnetic field. What the Space Brothers are doing in connection with the new science, the new technology of light, is recreating on the physical plane a counterpart of our magnetic field. 
Each planet has a magnetic field around in which the lines of force in the magnetic field overlap and a vortex is formed, a chakra, as it were. The same as in our own etheric system. There are seven chakras up the spine, but they are up the etheric spine. These corn circles are vortices or chakras and are replicas of our planet's magnetic field, which they are creating on the physical plane. They are not only in crops, they are also in the mountains. They are in the oceans. Wherever the vortexes are on the etheric plane, they replicate them on the physical plane. The fact that they are in corn allows us to see them. That's why they do it. They turn the corn in the most wonderful way to show you that it is made by intelligent beings, not by haphazard flights of birds or freak winds or tornadoes or any of that kind of natural phenomena. The actual forms are arbitrary. Many people think they are an ancient language from Atlantis. They're not. They are not exactly haphazard, but they don't mean anything. They are beautiful, and they ought to be. That ought to be enough. They are obviously made by intelligent beings. Mm. So it just follows on what you're saying it, with yeah. the chakras. Yeah, John. I love that idea of um, I have chakras. The planet has chakras. God has chakras. Yeah. A paddock has one. A paddock has a chakra. Mm. I love that idea too, Peter. Is the only ones we see mm. are uh, in the corn. Yeah. They're at the bottom of the ocean, they're on mountain tops. Yeah. And I was reading something recently and they've discovered an incredible pattern in, in the mountains above Peru that they've never seen, never discovered before. But it's ancient. But to me it looked like a crop circle in the stone of a mountain. And I kind of, you've just reminded me then that maybe that was a crop circle done some thousands of years ago. Mm. Yeah. Because we've been on the planet for how long, chaps? 18 and a half million years. 18 and a half million years. There is... Mm cultures and civilizations come and gone that we don't even know of. Exactly. That aren't in the history books. That aren't in the history books. Yes. Not yet. Not yet. And uh, another letter here from somebody who's asking about what does the, the Buddha do? What is his part in the reappearance of the Christ? Benjamin Krem answers, he plays a very powerful part, which is not generally known. He works with and in a sense stands behind Maitreya all the time. He is no longer in the physical body, but has given that up to be on the highest spiritual center of our planet, Shambhala, which we were talking about before. Shambhala, an energetic center in the Gobi Desert, that dwell, there dwells the Lord of the world, Sanat Kamara, a group of Kamaras around him, and various very evolved individuals, like the Buddha. This is not Gautama Buddha, but the one who worked through Gautama, the Prince Gautama is no longer on the solar system. He is on Sirius. The Buddha stands behind the Christ and affects his thinking in relation to the East. There is an ancient Indian Eastern teaching above what we call the vestiges of the Buddha. At present safely hidden, but which will be taken up by the Christ, the coming one. These vestiges are the sum total of the Buddha emotional intel intuitional nature and of his knowledge and thought, the astral and mental bodies of the Buddha. They augment the emotional and mental equipment of the Christ himself. The Buddha embodies the energy of wisdom, Maitreya, the energy of love. In relation to the East, Maitreya thus gains the experience of the Buddha, and through the use of the Buddha's emotional mental equipment, is able to enter into the consciousness of the Eastern mind, presumably to a deeper extent than would otherwise be possible. The Buddha now embodies the wisdom aspect from cosmic levels, and he transmits this energy through Maitreya into the world. And one of the um, aspects of the Christ's new work will be to bring through the will aspect of mm -hmm. love, um, from Shambhala. Mm. So um, that's why, that's how important the, the Buddha is in this whole um, system. And he he works in association with Maitreya. Yes, he does. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yes. He's also of the earth evolution, isn't he? Mm. Buddha. Or well, Maitreya is. Buddha and Maitreya. They both, um, I think, Peter, from memory, they both evolved about the same time. 
they they did the um, third initiation, that's, I believe, uh, right, yeah. uh, in Atlantean mid Atlantean times yeah. together. Yeah. And so, in that sense, they are brothers, uh, mm. very much so. But um, the Buddha comes from an, an earlier system, ah. po- possibly from the moon chain system, but I don't know whether that's verifiable. Yeah. See, listeners, there's so much stuff here, isn't there? It's <laughs> it's more than just a snapshot, oh, really, it's isn't it? a snapshot it? of life. Come on. All this information can be found on the Share International website, www.share-international.org. And also don't forget the podcasts, which are available on the Plains FM website. We welcome your comments, questions and feedback. Please contact us at emergencenews at gmail.com. Mm-hmm.